Please take your seats. Welcome to this evening's meeting. We're going to have our invocation from Pastor or Reverend Eddie Dowell of Light of Joy, our Word, Word of Faith Church in Riverdale, be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. If you would, please rise. Let us pray. Father God, we come right now, Lord God, to acknowledge you, Lord God, and to thank you, Lord God, for our being here, Lord God. And Father God, we ask that you would continue to bless this county, Lord God. And Father God, we thank you for all the blessings that you have already given us. We thank you for this great leadership, Lord God, that you've given us. We thank you for the citizens of this county, Lord God. And Father God, we pray, Lord God, that you would have your way, Lord God. Father God, we pray for unity, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you would, Lord God, have your way with each one of them, Lord God. Father God, bless each decisions that they make, Lord God. And Father God, we pray your blessings upon the citizens of this county, Lord God. Father God, help us to continue to love one another, Lord God. Help us, Father God, to continue to set the right example for our children, Lord God. And Lord God, we want to give you all the praise, Lord God. We ask for new relationships to be born tonight, Lord God. Father God, we ask for new resources, Lord God, to enter this county, Lord God. And Father God, we ask that you will get all the glory and all the praise, Lord God. Father God, we bind up the spirit of divisions, Lord God. Father God, that we will begin to reach across the aisles, Lord God, and, and embrace one another, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, this day, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God. Move on us, Lord God. Bless our nation, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, this day for what you're about to do in this place, Lord God. Have your way. Now let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord God. Help us to always respect one another, Lord God. We give it all to you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Good evening. Welcome to the February 19, 2019 regular business meeting of the Clayton County Board of Commissioners. The first order of business is the adoption of the agenda. Does any members of the board want to offer any amendments? Uh, yes, I have some uh, offers. In the uh, consent agenda, if we would pull out uh, L. That's 224. M. P is in Paul. That's it. That's under the consent agenda. Yes. Yeah, so we're taking that off the consent agenda and placing it on the regular agenda. Uh, yes, or at least discussing it separately. Yes. Yes. On the but regular you, well, agenda. Yes. You want to. So it's going on the regular agenda. On the regular yeah. agenda. Happen. All right. That's a motion. Uh, is there a second? I second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed. It's unanimous. Also, I would like to get the minutes to reflect item H, which is a recommendation for approval of task order RFP 18-02 to show an effective date of 930 of 2018. So that's just for purposes of the uh, minutes to reflect that on the consent agenda. Is there a uh, mo that, is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed. It's unanimous. Mr. Chair, I'd like to actually hold item 14, and that is for the rezoning of Woosley Road, uh, and that's for rezoning it from a state residential. How right, is there a second? I'll second, second the motion. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? 
It's unanimous. Uh, Madam Clerk, I would like to remove number four on the regular. Uh, yeah. On the regular agenda? Yes, Thank number you. four is uh, Superior Court Law Clerks uh, under the uh, HR. Is there a second? Uh, second? What are you, what are you right. No, we're taking it off. Okay. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? What is that, next? Mr. Chair, again? I'm sorry? It number four on the four. regular agenda. Okay. And I think is that Mr. Chuck, Chuck Reed had a question or so. Commissioner, did you also want to... Um, Oh, I skipped one. 13. I apologize. Yes, and the subsequent. Mr. Chair, if we could go back real quick. It's Actually, you can just not make going back and just go ahead and make the motion. Okay. Too. I'll make a motion that we also hold. Let me get the item number right. I apologize. That we also hold item 13 as well, which um, also pertains to item 14, and this is the conservation portion of that uh, reclassification or rezoning. All right, is there a second? Second. second. Uh, probably moved and second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Hold on just a second. For, for clarification, Mr. Chair. Um, could you let us know that by holding items 13 and 14, do they come back to the board for a final decision at the next meeting? There, since there's been no um, public uh, comment. comment, then yes, you can bring no it back at, okay. the at the next um, <coughs> zoning. zoning meeting, which will be in March, second okay. meeting in March. No problem. Thank you. Do I need to give a reason why we're doing that? Okay. Are there any Are others? Th any others? I think the constituent needs to sir. No, sir. Okay. No, sir. Please have a seat. Um, if if I can have a point of privilege, Mr. Chairman, um, and I don't want to prolong the meeting. I don't want anyone to feel like there's no explanation. We're just holding the item simply because there are a few more things that need to um, not only come before the board, but the, um, the landowners themselves also have asked to hold it, and I've had discussions with several people that have called me so that you all can continue to have a conversation, but it will come before the board for a final decision, whether yay or nay. It's just holding the item until the next meeting because there are a few more things that we need to look into and then it will be a final decision whether yay or nay. That's simple as that. Um, we're trying to do everything that we can to make sure that we hear both sides before a final decision is made and we're still um, going through legal as well, having legal conversations as well. That's simple. And just to add to that, uh, because we are not having a public hearing today, at the very next meeting that we have in reference to this, you will be able to speak up should you choose to do so. Yes. But no, there will be no conversation or no public hearing on this matter today. Uh, next That's meeting right. is when? No, so, so, Chuck, is that the next meeting? Or okay, next meeting? we are still in, in, in session, so if y'all could leave quietly, I would appreciate it. Thank and if you. you can at least hear when the next meeting is. Somebody have that date? March, March 19th. March 19th. Third, the third Tuesday of every month. First and third 630. Tuesday. Yeah. All right, if y'all could exit it quietly and quickly, we would appreciate it.
Lord. That was right. Mm. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant Kofiel, if you could uh, close those doors after the last go out there. All right, Madam Clerk, let's proceed. Are there any further changes or amendments? All right, hearing none, is there a motion to approve the, adopt the agenda? So moved, Mr. Chair. Is there a second? Second. Probably moved and second. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Our next item will be a proclamation presented by Chairman Turner honoring the Tuskegee Airmen. And now the reading of the proclamation. Clayton County Board of Commissioners recognized the Atlanta Chapter Tuskegee Airmen Incorporated. Whereas the Atlanta Chapter Tuskegee Airmen Incorporated was incorporated in Atlanta in August 1976. The Atlanta Chapter is an educational and community-based organization committed to maintaining the traditions and legacy of the Tuskegee Airmen who served in a dedicated and valiant manner during World War II. It's important to preserve and recognize the historic efforts and achievement of the men and women who were pioneers as American military aviators, mechanics, and support personnel in World War II. And whereas the original Tuskegee Airmen, also referred to as documented original Tuskegee Airmen, is anyone who served at Tuskegee Army Airfield between the years of 1941 and 1949. They are Edward Johnson, the oldest member at 103 years old. Irma Pete Dryden, 
a nurse who was also married to Lieutenant Colonel Charles A. Train Dryden, Sarah Plummer, who worked as a supply clerk at Tuskegee Air Base, Wilburn G. Mason, Hiram E. Little, Norris Connolly, Frederick Henry, Val Archer, Dr. Hillard W. Pouncey, Reverend Thomas N. Bristow, Earl Martin, Charles Bussey Jr., and Milton P. Crenshaw. Heritage members of the Atlanta Tuskegee Airmen Torchbearers are members who are relatives of the original DOTA. They are Geraldine Gilliam, Al Whiteside, Larry W. Bussey, Piper Burks, and Dolores Crenshaw Singleton. And whereas the Atlanta chapter of Tuskegee Airmen Incorporated encourage youth to give consideration to the disciplines of science, technology, engineering, and math, or STEM, which has received nationwide emphasis. The Atlanta chapter also seeks to collaborate with businesses and various organizations to promote careers in aviation and accepts the challenge to continue the legacy and mission of the Tuskegee Airmen. Now, therefore, I, Jeffrey E. Turner, Chairman on behalf of the Clayton County Board of Commissioners, do hereby recognize and celebrate the Atlanta Chapter Tuskegee Airmen Incorporated. In witness thereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of Clayton County, Georgia, to be affixed this 19th day of February in the year 2019. <laughs> Clayton County Board of Commissioners recognize the Atlanta Chapter. set this up. <laughs> An honorary member of the Atlanta chapter, Tuskegee Airmen. <laughs> and that will take place in May, and the time and date will be announced, and we'll make sure that you all get it, because there is an initiation he's going through. <laughs> so, but I want to let you all know, everything we've done as far as the chapter goes, Veterans Day's program, Chairman's always been there to include Mundus Mill High School and Jonesboro High School. And we appreciate what he does for the county and for this, for this organization. Thank you. On behalf of the Board of Directors of Atlanta Chapter, Tuskegee Airmen, Inc., on behalf of all the documented original Tuskegee Airmen and their families, we'd like to invite you to come and join the Atlanta Chapter of Tuskegee Airmen Incorporated. We are on the website at Atlanta Chapter Tuskegee Airmen Inc. and it's open to every and any individual. We also have junior members who are children, um, teenage children, and we have a summer program where we teach um, our youth, our teenagers, how to, they, it's a camp. They come and they learn how to fly. They learn about aeronautics and um, everything in aviation that there is. So it, that too is on our website. We welcome you to join and thank you so very much for everything you've done for us. Madam Clerk. Next, we will have a presentation by the Community Development Director, Patrick Ejiki.
Chairman, Vice Chair, and Commissioners, good evening. I'm here today to present an update of Speaking the in the mic, please. I'm here today to present an update on the newly configured concierge division in Community Development Department. Um, the board approved this concept last year and it went live this January. The whole intent of it is to improve our customer service. And um, this is just to tell you where we are and, and what we're doing. I have, I have here with me today two of the members of my department, the Assistant Director, Breaker Johnson, and Raquel Obumba, the Manager for the Concierge Service. Would you all stand? Thank you. As you can see, this is the services that we provide in Community Development Department. As you can see, it's quite um, a bit of of um, services that we provide in community, um, in community development department. This is designed to, de uh, the, the concierge service is designed to handle, to handle all incoming inquiries or requests from the public, going all the way from permits to zoning matters. The concept is basically explained this way, the best way to explain it. When you go to a high-end dealer, you do not talk to the mechanics in the workshop. You talk to whoever is your handler, who you call. Then the folks in the back who are repairing the cars talk to whoever it is, and they talk to you. So that concept has merit in it so that it centralizes the message and it makes sure that the customers do, don't get varying messages as we go along. So, as you can see on this display, <coughs> the blue dot is the collection point for concierge. And folks can inquire a number of things, our customers, both the, uh, uh, both is, uh, the citizens, the business community, can ask for planning and zoning, land development, building permits, or business licenses. It comes to us and we coordinate how this thing travels within the system to other reviewing agencies. Some of the reviews are not actually done in our department. Only two of the reviews are done in community development department, which is the building, um, uh, the plan and zoning, and the building inspections where we do the plans review. So that is the concept. Then we get it back from all the reviewing departments and relay the message back to the customer. So the customer is just talking to us. One would ask, why go to this concept? There's something in it that makes a whole lot of sense. It's usually when you go where you're having a lot of problems, you collect data, you don't understand the data, you don't analyze the data. You don't see where you have flashpoints or bottlenecks. What this is, do, is doing for us, with the help of our new system, to make it become a data-driven analysis system. Uh, the analytics in it allows us to know how many permits are in what stage. By doing that, we know where the flashpoints could be. And that's part of it. It allows the managers for these different divisions to strategically restructure staff workload and balance them. It requires us to think on our feet. It's not a stead in stone type thing. You have to adjust according to what is happening. And it requires, not tacking it, uh, it requires tracking. You have to track on a daily basis. It's a 24 seven way of doing things. And we do have some part of this presentation, you see what our service delivery is. With the new system that we, we, we went into, we're trying to tweak the new system. As you all know, in any new system, there are tweaks to be made. There are things you discover. 
that you didn't know when you were implementing it. Did we test the system extensively? But the simulation is a controlled environment for testing. When you get into production, it's a different animal. You start seeing things you cannot script doing the control testing. So we're trying to correct those and working with IT and the vendor to fix those things. We have our five staff members in this group. And, and to the right, it's what their primary daily charge is. And we vet in this um, to make sure that it's balanced well and <coughs> we're working with this group to make sure that uh, we know exactly what is happening before we either figure out how to add or subtract. This page tells what we have said we're going to do. And I have uh, asked the COO for some sort of uh, a solution. <laughs> because um, the new system have its challenges and we're working through it. Uh, but the core states, this um, service delivery time frames we must achieve. If we do, and we will do, it makes us the best permanent um, outfit in the metro. Nobody meets this. So, that's where we're headed. And you can see it's in building permits, it's in business license, and it's in zoning matters. The zoning matters we meet because it's a calendar structured approach. Once you get inside of that calendar, it's structured when things come to this board and when it goes to Zag and all that. So that is um, kind of safe. But the rest of it, that's a caveat to all this. If you read the bottom, <coughs> left corner, all this relies really on if the applicant submits all the required documents in a timely manner and pay the fees, then this will happen because if they don't submit the, the, the required documents and pay the fees, then you have the back and forth as to, I didn't do this, this didn't happen. But the concierge will also be on the offense in terms of, say like, we have folks who come through our customer service portal, our citizens portal, where they online to submit things. They submit an application without support documentation. Once we get those, we classify them as incomplete. Some submit with completed without paying. It goes to payment due. Some of them that are in the status of payment due are sick of us by now. We send email every day to them to pay, their f to pay the fees because we've done the work. So there are benefit, a, lo a whole lot of benefits in where we're headed and the system we are using to do it. So that is the end of my presentation. Questions? Are there any questions for Mr. Jakey? Um, Mr. Hamburg. <laughs> Possibly, but it probably won't. You know how sometimes we get these uh, <coughs> refunds, uh, business, I, we may have one on here this time, about a refund for a permit and all. One time we were getting quite a few of them, so I'm thinking this is probably <coughs> going to alleviate that. Yes, mm. it, it will, and also our internal process allows mm. that to happen also. Mm -hmm. um, the georeferencing or the geo rules in the system saying that if you're not on incorporated Clayton, the system will not let you to start an application. Yeah. There are some mistakes. And two, we changed our alcohol license procedure okay. where you pay the 250 initially. If you pass the background check, then we can process your alcohol license. In the past, they paid the whole amount. Mm -hmm. And if they don't pass the, the, um, the background check, we have to refund the fees. Right. So the system is helping us and some processes that we implemented. Good. Thank you. I just have one thing to say. Conceptually, things sound good, but practicality <laughs> always works best. That's the only comment I have. Any other questions? Thank you for your presentation. Thank sir. you.
Now we're at our public comment portion of the meeting. Citizens will be given a three minute maximum time limit to speak before the Board of Commissioners about various topics, issues, and concerns. Following 30 minutes of hearing from the public, the Board of Commissioners will allow the remainder of the citizens who have signed up to speak at the next Tuesday business meeting. <coughs> I just regulate it from here. I regulate it from here. Dr. Henry Anderson. Henry Anderson, unincorporated Clayton County, Hampton, Georgia. At the Clayton County Board of Commissioners regular business meeting last month on Tuesday, January the 15th, 2019, a Clayton County citizen's vacancy opened up on the Clayton County Board of Zoning Appeals due to the previous board member, Mr. DeMont Davis, having to come off to serve as a newly elected commissioner of Clayton County Commissioner District Number 4 starting his four-year term this year, 2019. This was a full board appointment where any five of you are Clayton County Board of Commissioners could nominate a citizen Clayton County citizen, citizen of your choosing to be brought before you before a vote for either an approval for appointment to serve on the Clayton County Board of Zoning Appeals or a disapproval or denial vote. When all five of you at that Tuesday, January 15, 2019 meeting did not submit a name to come up for nomination and vote, you all decided to hold the nomination until your next regular business meeting, which was two weeks ago on Tuesday, February 5, 2019. Because I once served on the Clayton County Board of Zoning Appeals for a total of six years, from January 16, 2001 to January 9, 2007, and was an excellent, exceptional, productive, and successful member on the Zoning Appeal Board, this experience made me an ideal candidate for nomination to be voted on for either an approval, an affirmative vote for appointment, or a disapproval or denial vote to not be appointed to fill your present vacancy on the Zoning Appeals Board. On Monday, January the 21st, 2019, I wrote a three-page email correspondence letter to all five of you stating my desired interest to serve on the Clayton County Board of Zoning Appeals and requested that my name be brought up for nomination in a full board vote for either approval or disapproval. I met all of your unwritten requirements and qualifications by sending a formal email correspondence letter to all five of you stating my desired interest to serve on the Clayton County Board of Zoning Appeals. And your commission clerk already had my resume on file with also having previously served on the Clayton County Hospital Authority Board of Trustees. At your regular business meeting two weeks ago on Tuesday, February 5th, 2019, where the Citizens Board appointment came up again on the Clayton County Board of Zoning Appeals, the only nomination that was made was a citizen's name brought out before you by the District 4 Commissioner, Mr. DeMont Davis, who all five of you are Clayton County Board of Commissioners approved in a 5-0 unanimous vote. I will continue with my public commenting on the scrutiny, examination, and my ultimate citizen's evaluation on how all five of you are Clayton County Board of Commissioners purposely deliberately, intentionally, and willfully exclude, shut out, and deny the Clayton County citizens, some of whom all five of you have a strong dislike for because we hold you accountable, answerable, and responsible for decisions that you make as well as don't make from having the opportunity and chance to serve on the Clayton County Board of Commissioners Citizens Boards and of your flawed, unfair, unjust, prejudiced, and biased Citizens Board selection process during the next public comment and session at the next Clayton County Board of Commissioners regular business meeting. Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. I have the statement that I need to read, sir. Okay. okay. Go ahead and read it at this time. Please state your name and county of residency for record. Spe speak clearly into the microphone, and speakers <clears throat> should be courteous, respectful, and not make any derogatory remarks or use abusive language when addressing the board, disparatory or remarks. Thank you. Herschel Trawick. Herschel Trawick. Alvin Farmer. Could you give this to the chairman, please? Alvin Farmer, unincorporated Clayton County. Education is very important to me. Uh, 
Representative Valencia Stovall invited some senior citizens supporting Education Day on the uh, Friday, the 8th of February. I went to this meeting, got some information, which is I've been feeding y'all information about how to better educate our kids. I did not know the desire that, I mean, the distress that our kids was in. If you go to schoolgrades.georgia, spell the word Georgia out, dot G-O-V, pull up Clayton County, you will see what I seen. This information comes from the Governor's Office of Student Achievement. We have uh, 37 elementary schools, 23 of them are failing. We have 17 middle schools, 14 of them are failing. We have 12 high schools, nine of them are failing. This information that I present to you, uh, I don't know why it's not being used. Uh, Commissioner Gregory, I looked at your school some kind of way. You work for Monday Mills High School from what I understand. Your school is one of them schools that are failing. They grade you like they grade you in school, A, B, C, D, and F. Monday Mills <coughs> High School, no disrespect, is getting a D. I wrote down a few schools. Elite Scholars is graded an A, according to this report. This is not mine. Forest Park is graded a D. Jonesboro High School, graded a D. Lovejoy High School is rated a D. That's where my son graduated from. I informed you that I did not depend on Lovejoy alone. My son is in the Air Force with a job that carries a top secret clearance with a special background investigation. My research said that's a $50,000 investment and you're my tax dollars. Money well spent, by the way. Uh, still well, they got a B as in boy. I inform you, Monday Mills Perry High School, which is within walking distance of this office, also the Board of Education. They have an F. I looked at some things, what kind of money we're spending on these people. I, I pulled up just two schools. Uh, King Elementary, they say per student, we're spending $10,095 per year. That school is graded a D as in dog. Uh, Morrow Elementary, we're spending $10,064 per year. That school is rated a C. This information that I gave you will help them. I want you to have someone in the Board of Education to contact me because they won't let me go to them. They need to come to me and we can meet on a neutral site. Mr. Farmer, I know you and I spoke, but have you had an opportunity to vet that information with somebody from the school system? I called the name that you gave me and we've been playing phone tag. So we ha I haven't got with that per the chairman of the uh, school board as of yet. We haven't met up. Okay, I really wish you would make sure that you find opportunity to vet that information because from my understanding, we don't have any schools on the failing school list. Uh, but uh, mm -hmm. oh, you got, well, please, the please vet, vet, properly vet that information to make well, sure. Well, the website is lying because that's where I got my information I'm from. I'm not saying one way or the other, sir. I, All the right, thing I'm sir, asking you to do is vet the information and definitely relay that information to, some, to the, the Board do. of Education. Thank you, sir. All right. Ernestine Purvis. Ernestine Purvis. Charles Cooper. Charles Cooper. <clears throat> Eric Dorsey. <coughs> Eric Dorsey. Pam Burnett. Pam Burnett, Scott Corey, still got a call. Scott Corey, Mr. Orlando Good, Orlando Good in Clayton County. I recently had the opportunity to attend a retreat for the commissioners that was conducted by uh, the gentleman from the Carl Vincent Institute. I thought it was very informative right up until the point where he told me to shut up and sit down.
because I didn't understand the rules of engagement. Well, I was told that because I wanted, I wanted to ask one question. When was the report going to be published? So I know, hold you guys accountable for all those grandiose ideas you had and the money you want to spend. Uh, it kind of reminded me of the Development Authority of Clayton County. Have you been to those meetings? Children should be seen and not heard while we spend your money. Anyway, you have an IT problem. There's a wise gentleman that said, the two tests of insanity is doing the same things over and over and expecting different results. Why are you giving this company more money and they cannot fix the problem for registration at the senior centers? Be it at Bailey or Griswell. You don't want to play with those seniors because they vote. <clears throat> you also have a problem with the um, recreation center at South Clayton. I keep getting told that, uh, well, it's controlled by the jail. It's not controlled by the jail. Victor doesn't have TVs over there. It's not a recreation center or a lounge. So for you guys to just keep putting this off and can't find the, the solution to it, I would suggest that you find somebody else to fix your IT problem. <clears throat> Mr. Garber and several times has spoken about the trash in Clayton County. You want to clean up your image and stop being a dumping ground for Fulton County? What you need to do is to make sure, especially when the citizens tell you of a problem, you address that. Um, I sent out several emails for Tara Boulevard and Iron Gate subdivision entrance. Uh, Nelson, Warden Nelson, his crew makes a good attempt to keep it clean, but they'll clean it on a Monday, mm -hmm. and by Thursday it's dirty. Um, nobody's going to come here if your city's dirty or unsafe. So I'd seriously suggest, I know Pamela Ambles is doing what she can in terms of benefits, but your first responders need to be taken care of. Uh, nobody's going to move here. Nobody's going to open up any businesses and what have you. See, that's what's going on in Fulton County. They have an economic development, and they have a serious increase in crime. They're paying their offices more. You need to take care of ours. By the way, have you seen this magazine? I looked through this magazine. It was a Super Bowl commemorative magazine. It's beautiful. And guess what? Clayton County ain't in here. Thank you, sir. Mickey Garber. Thank you for that little <laughs> reminder. Some of us need it from time to time. <coughs> Mickey Garber, unincorporated. Rex, Georgia. For my discussion tonight, let me start off and say a big thank you for all the people elected and paid high-ranking officials who came to have a one-on-one -on -one discussion at the organized Clayton. We need more discussion between this organization, and if we have more of that kind of discussion, maybe there wouldn't be so much emphasis on being kind, courteous, respectful, and no bad language. <laughs> <coughs> to continue, <clears throat> let me speak on garbage and bring a possible solution and not talk about how bad it is, but to bring a possible solution. A resolution should be formulated for the four standards of business. You have those standards in place. There are rules for opening the business. There also should be rules for closing the business. Specifically speaking, when closing a property, the building is secured. 
but there's nothing written about the property being just secured. I'm talking about freestanding businesses. For example, uh, Commissioner Gregory, in your district, and Eckerd's just closed. The building's secured, but the property is open, and people drive in and dump. Also, across the street, a Waffle House was closed, and the property was secured. The building was secured, but the property isn't, and it's used as a dumping ground. And Mr. Matarkel knows about how many times he's cleaned it up because I've watched him. <clears throat> they should secure the driveways. And that's the, what I want to say and bring a possible solution to the dumping situation. Thank you very much for your time. Are there any questions? You got 14 more seconds. Speak up. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Kim Neal. Kim Neal. Roy Moore. Roy Moore. Pat Hussey. Pat Hussey. Van Shires. Van Shires. Margie Trawick. Yes, sir. Okay. So you don't want to speak. Okay. Thank you, sir. Donald White. Gene Hussey. Latresa Freesome. Melanie Woodall. Karen Chris. Kevin, I'm sorry, Kevin Chris. Betty Harris. Willie Harris. What is that? Looks like Tom Franklin. Tom Franklin. Linda Franklin. Geraldo. Geraldo. McFarland. McFarland. Mark. You can't see that. Mark. Mr. Mark. Mark. Not just any Mark, but Mark uh, I.R. All right, Madam Clerk, that concludes public comment. The board will now consider the consent agenda. <clears throat> All right, is that a motion to approve? So motion. moved. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. The board will now consider requests from the Human Resources Director, Ms. Pamela, Pamela Abrams. Good evening, Chairman, Vice Chair, and Commissioners. Human Resources has uh, four requests this evening. The first one, on behalf of Transportation and Development, Human Resources is requesting the Board's approval to hire for the Fleet Technician 3 classification at Step 19. Grade 21, Step 19 is $52,066. Total compensation for that position is $71,808. This represents a difference of $12,176 of step one. 
All right, is there a motion? So moved. So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. <laughs> Any questions? Mr. Matarco. Mm -hmm. Nature of your quest and what difficulties are you confronted with? Currently in the fleet technician three position, that's our heavy truck mechanics, uh, fire apparatus, um, dump trucks type um, where you have a diesel background. We have six positions that are qualified to do those repairs and only five of them, or excuse me, one of them is filled, five are vacant. Um, the vacancies range from seven months already up to 23 months. Uh, we just have been unable to attract qualified candidates for the starting salary. Uh, we have recently been able to get a couple of them to come in and talk to us on an interview um, but they would not accept the starting salary. So we have gauged um, from a couple of them what it would take to get um, their interest. And that's how we derived the appropriate step at mid-range. We feel we could get at least a couple people in to help um, ease some of the burden we're facing right now. So you said one of the positions have been vacant for 23 months? Yes, sir. 23 months. And that has called a slowdown and being able to repair the equipment and getting it back to work as soon as possible. Most definitely. All right, are there any other questions for Mr. Martarko? I just want to know what have we been doing for 23 months? That's a long time. There's a lot of outsourcing going on mm -hmm. um, to get to the vendors. And of course, that costs more money than doing it in the house. Okay. Any other questions? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed. Mr. Adams. Thank you. On behalf of Senior Services, Human Resources is requesting the board's approval to delete Senior <coughs> Services Financial Coordinator and add a Congregate Site Coordinator. Compensation for both classifications is grade, six, grade 16, step 1. $32,811 for a total compensation of 47709 and there is no budgetary impact to this request. All right, is there a motion? Motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Uh, Ms. Strauder. Good evening. Good evening. So your restructuring, is that for efficiency's sake or what's the uh, request? Um, this is not a restructure. No. Um, the Atlanta Regional Commission put out an RFP for any senior services department that would like to apply for additional funding through the Older Americans Act. So we did a proposal back in August of 2018 requesting to implement a congregate program at Griswold Senior Center. We were one of the few departments that was actually granted the money to start the program. What I did was I only asked for money for the direct service, meaning the meals and the transportation for the seniors. I did not ask for any salary money because that would take away from the actual services that was provided to the seniors. So what I did was because we had a vacant position that we have carried for a year, I decided to use that money um, to fund the program, to fund the position for the program. Um, what's important with this is if we do not implement the program, there's some money that we will have to return back to the state and federal because we would be lapsing, we would lapse the funds. So we have to, if, well, we don't have to, but it would be in our best interest to start the program so we do not have to return the funding because anytime you return funding back, it's distributed to other, other triple A's and we may not be able to recoup that funding. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you for that explanation. <coughs> Are there any other questions? I, I do. I have a question. Uh, is there a deadline? Because what I see here is a change in your um, in the makeup. And I know the last meeting we had someone to bring some changes and all. And we said wait for the um, budget process, and I, which we're, we're in the budget process now. So do you have a date uh, that it cannot go past? six months, three months, or whatever, because if not, then I would suggest we do the same thing. So if we do not start spending down the funds now, so you guys approved the amendment in December. Mm -hmm. So the, you signed off on the amendment for this program. 
So they gave us the money thinking that we were going to start the program between now and March. So there was some background information that we had to gather. We were having information with our, we were having problems with our transportation contract, which impacts this particular program. So I would have brought it to you in January, but because we were having problems with MLB, I could not. I had to troubleshoot and figure out what was going to be the best route we needed to take. Also, the facility in which we're trying to implement the program is short, a manager right now. So if we were not short a manager, it would be possible for me to try to implement the program. However, when you're talking about grant funding, this is a lot of work that this person has to do. There's a lot of paperwork. There's a lot of moving parts. There's transportation. There's the meal compliance. There are just so many moving parts. So we do need a specialized person to implement this program. They have given us about $33,000 to implement the program. So. There are some time constraints. If we don't start spending the money down now, we won't spend it down by June 30th, which means we will lapse the funding and that would not look favorable on our part. So this is closer to an emergency. Would you classify this as an emergency? I would not classify it as an emergency, but I will say this, there, are, there is a waiting list of seniors who would you know, like to participate in this program this is a program that's heavily social driven, meaning it is for the senior to get out of the house, have transportation to the center, breakfast is provided, lunch is provided, and they are transported home. So from that perspective, it's not really considered an emergency. But from the perspective of us being fiscally responsible for state and federal money mm -hmm. that we signed off on, that is, just wouldn't look favorable for us. Okay. Uh, so thank just you. so I'm, I'm sorry. Were you finished? No, I was just saying thank you. Uh, just so we're clear, the you're using you're deleting a position to use that salary to pay for this position, so there is no budgetary impact. There is no budgetary impact. Okay. I have a question, Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. Um, just wanted to the congregate program. I know you do a great one at Frank Bailey. So with this grant, is it's going to cover all transportation and all the needs that congregate. Um, seniors will be needing? Yes. So the beauty of this is the program will cover all of those needs for transportation, the meal for breakfast, and the meal for lunch. And also, we have become the model for yes. the state, again, mm -hmm. for doing this program without walls. When you go to other senior centers, you see the congregate program just put over in a corner. And when you walk mm -hmm. into the center, you can tell, oh, what's wrong with this group of seniors? Well, we've done a phenomenal job, and it's not my credit, but our staff has done a phenomenal job of going to a philosophy called Senior Center Without Walls. So we incorporate everything that we do. So the congregate program does not stand out, you know, so they're incorporated into the day-to-day -day routine of the seniors who are more, you know, functional than they are. Do you know how many seniors you have in the congregate program at Frank Bailey? At Frank Bailey, we have between 35 and 40. That fluctuates mm -hmm. because with the congregate program, you not on, you can be a driver, so you can actually drive to the program yeah. and participate in congregate. Okay. So we don't always count the drivers that come into the program. Okay. And this program would be a pilot for about 15 for right now, mm -hmm. but we will also increase some of the numbers that we have at Frank Bailey because there is a waiting list for some of those participants at Frank Bailey. So roughly about 25,000 would cover um, the program at Griswell, and we would use the additional five to take some of those clients that are on the waiting list at Bailey to pull them into the program. Mr. Chair, I don't have a question, but I do have a statement for you. Um, before coming on the board, I've been over at Senior Services and um, volunteered <coughs> even through just simple meals on wheels for, oh my gosh, been about seven or eight years now through Rotary. And I'm gonna tell you, what you all do with the funds that you have is phenomenal. There are a lot of times that we see people coming before us that move positions, create positions, and always asking, but you never ask for anything. And I just wanna say that if this board previously approved for you to be able to go out and seek the grant, then it should just be just like we did the concierge and other things, natural that we give you what you need to be able to continue what we previously approved because essentially we gave you a stamp of approval by approving for you to go for this grant. So I just wanna say thank you for you, what you and your staff do. And I will tell you, you should see the faces of the folks when we deliver those meals. Some of them I wish they would participate in this program because some of them need to get out. Thank you.
Yeah, and just to echo what the commissioner just said, y'all are doing a great job. Every time I'm down at ARC, they're praising our senior services uh, department and the work that you do, and I appreciate that. And the one thing that we don't need to do is start de-obligating funds because it looks like we don't need the state's money right. when we do, especially with two additional senior services, uh, senior center centers coming online in the coming year. It's imperative that we continue to collect that state funds. Is there any other uh, comments? Or the only comment I am going to make <clears throat> is I've personally seen these folks dig out of their own pockets to make sure that our seniors were taken care of. And that's the only statement I'm going to make is this board, while we're giving other folks in other departments raises where I still get phone calls about not being practical, I think that we need to make sure that your department is funded adequately. I really do. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. <clears throat> On behalf of our employees, Human Resources I'm sorry, is. Sorry, Ms. Let's take five and six together. Okay. All right. You want them together? Yes. Okay. You deal with the same thing, right? They, they are. Uh, they did are. we do uh, three? three? No, we three. Did we do three? three? Yeah. No, 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 we did not. No, we did not. I'm sorry. You're on number three, right? I think we skipped that. Did we do it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Three, two, two, two and three together. together? Okay. Okay. I thought that was finance department. On behalf of our employees, Human Resources is requesting to renew the contract with Aetna for seven months for the period of June 1st, 2019 to December 31st, 2019 for the purpose of providing administrative oversight and management of the self-funded plan. Human Resources is also requesting to renew our contract with Kaiser for seven months for the period of June 1st, 2019 to December 31st, 2019 for the purpose of continuing to provide the HMO coverage option to our employees. We're also requesting a 7228 cost share in which the county absorbs 72% of the premium. The cost share, this particular cost sharing model will, will not result in a premium increase for our employees. The cost to renew the Aetna contract is 11,000, I mean 11 million $858,318 to repeat $11,558,313 and that is for a seven month period. I sent a memo, a memo to the board and you'll see the figures on there is for a 12 month period but when you do the calculations the 11 million that is for a seven month period. The cost to renew with Kaiser for seven months is $5,690,865. I'll repeat, $5,690,865. Okay, did I miss it? What was the uh, recommendation? Did you give us a recommendation? I what did, you I did. To renew it for seven months, both of the contracts for seven months, at the 78, 20, uh, 72, 28. 28 cost share, which would not result in a premium increase for the employees. All right, is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Any questions? The only thing I need to, yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> thank you so much for your hard work. I really appreciate it. I really, really do. But I really would like for us to no longer continue to pay a broker that we've been paying for the past 14 years that I know that's been involved, who does all of our benefits for this county, and who's just going to continue to pass along and increase every year. That's the statement I want to make. And I know we're going to send it back out to renew it. All right? Understood. Thank you, Commissioner. That's uh, it. Any other questions? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Adams. Thank you. The board will now consider the request of our legal department 
Are we going to go back to uh, what we took off with? The Adam and Alabaster. Would you like me to do? I'll Take them one at a time. Thank you. Okay. Starting at Thank you. M. Uh, whatever one's first, that's fine. Okay. First is uh, a request for Clayton County Television to approve a, a partnership proposal with Clayton State University Athletics. There is no financial impact. All right, is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Any questions? Yes. <coughs> Commissioner Hamburg. Um, under the agreement with uh, the, uh, Clayton the, Cl yes, Clayton State, it says Clayton State will provide four season passes for basketball and soccer regular season home contests. Where were those? Tickets go. Who will be the benefactors of that? I've gone to all the games, Commissioner. So what was that? No, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. <laughs> <laughs> to be you honest with you, I don't. I don't think we've ever never taken a, that up. Um, that is, we've never taken it up. I don't think we've ever. We had need to tickets. discuss that. No problem. Okay, problem. that and the invitation to the athletic special events or whatever. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. I Would like, like basketball and soccer. Well, just go, Commissioner. <laughs> if I may add, though, I'm sure that Dr. Hines wouldn't mind making sure that everybody could be present. He's kind of well, open. Says, it just says He's four usually and five of us. So. I'm, I'm good. I'll watch Can it we TV. amend it to I'm five? <laughs> Wait a minute, y'all. This don't sound good. At all. That's, That's why joke. I said I'm good. I'm good. Watch it on TV. That's all right. fine. Those in favor, I, all I right. oppose this unanimous mix. Uh, can I make a statement? Because she don't know what I'm It wasn't meant for that. Let me tell you, they they welcome us to come and support Clayton State. And it, we that's are all. And, we're and big I've been. There. That's yeah. all. Yeah, we go. Go that's ahead, Chuck. The next is a request from Senior Service Department to uh, authorize an M uh, MOU between Clayton County Senior Services and the Alzheimer's Service Center. The financial impact is staff facility for fundraisers and gas for independent day trips. Further, to authorize the chairman to execute the agreement and otherwise perform all acts necessary to accomplish the intent of the agreement, to authorize the chief financial officer to amend the budget where necessary to reflect an appropriate revenue source and expense, all as may be required under the terms of the agreement. Is there a motion? So moved, Mr. Chair. Is there a second? I'll no, second the motion. Are there any questions? Uh, yes. Commissioner Hamburg. Okay, I noticed in the reading it said that we would um, provide gas for the trips and all, but um, under the scope it says that we would provide the vehicles and the drivers. Uh, what's the county's liability on this? Um, Mr. Reed, uh, can you, can you answer know? that question? The county's liability providing, for providing uh, transportation yeah. for, for the uh, trips. It would be as any time that the county's vehicles are being used. Uh, if there is a person who gets injured in an accident involving a county vehicle, the county Same would be liable. Okay. Uh, may I add real quick, didn't we approve some time ago for uh, an outside program to use our buses or our vans for oh, yeah, a- I just want to make sure, we've done this before, but yeah. I just want to make it clear and because it's not stated in the uh, overall uh, agreement. It's, it, you have to go into the small print. And this is a renewal of the agreement the that was approved back in 2017. Well, maybe not, uh, Ms. Strauder, is it this was my case? We, uh -uh. we didn't approve it. it. It was pulled from the agenda. It was. Right. But I just want to say if we can use it for the kids for a, a fraternity, we can use it for our seniors. Right. Uh, we do, we use all. it. I mean, as a matter of fact, we put in a new bus and all. Um, the agreement, it's two years. Now, is this an automatic renewal, or do we? does it come back to us? Um, it will come back. Part okay. of what I mentioned about our accreditation, we would have to do it every two years. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? I do. Uh, I know that Alzheimer's Center serves um, non-Clayton residents, and I appreciate you getting me that information. Would there be any... Um, differentiation between the two like I know the out-of-county seniors pay a certain portion for senior services 
and no, the in county uh, the taxpayers pay something else or residents pay so with I'm this is there so. any I'm not sure about the fee structure at the Alzheimer's Center but Melissa the executive director is here and she could answer that question. I'm not sure about how the fee structure is currently set up there. Well, and, and it's not necessarily just their fee structure. I mean, as far as now, they're, um, you're going to provide some services for them. Just curious as to if there would be any thing that would separate the I can, County tax. I'm always for, for doing something yeah. special for our seniors, so I could put something together and bring Who it back before involved? the board since it's related Who, to fees. What I, other counties? How about uh, you said the director is there? Excuse me. What are the counties? Uh, uh, sir? Come forward, ma'am. She's here. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and do you have any idea how many? Mm -hmm. I, I forgot, and you probably sent it to me. How many um, out of Clayton County residents? Totally, are there are so? 40, pro, 40 seniors enrolled in a program, and 30 are county residents. Okay. So okay. Hi, good evening. Hi. State good your evening. name for us. My name is Melissa Myers Bristol. I am the executive director for the Alzheimer's Services Center. Good evening, you all. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to provide the best services for the citizens of Clayton County. I and think the question was how many? What other counties? Other involved? counties and how we many? We have from clients from Fulton, Fayette, and Henry County. But most of those clients, they have, they actually pay through Medicaid. So most of them are not private pay clients. Most of our pi private pay clients are from Clayton County. And our center do a slide and scale fee where we normally charge them from $40 up to $130. And what I have been doing since I started this position is I have been helping our clients as much as possible who live in Clayton County because we do have some private pay clients who are really struggling to pay the regular fee of $40. So I have been doing flat rate fees and whatever I can to help them the most as, most as, as best as possible as we can based on our operational budget. Yeah, not that I don't want to be neighborly, but uh, it's hard for Clayton citizens to go to Henry or Fayette to get any services and all. So, I, I mean, I just want to mention that. So I hopefully they will return, you know, the different kind of services and start accepting some of our citizens <laughs> in some of their programs, too. Mr. Chair, can we entertain just structuring it since you're, we're looking at a partnership with possible partnership just on this level with senior services that we allow for you to be able to work with senior services so that we can mirror those fees because we do have a fee structure for those that are outside of the county that want to use the service just like if you want to come into the school system you can pay the tuition so can we do that and then that way we can still service the 30 that are county folks and then the you know less than 10 percent we can look at doing something different that will be wonderful all right, so could, in that vein, can you draw up something and, and maybe send it to uh, Ms. Strader and she can send it to the board and for our review as yes. far as what those scales are. Send them the legal, too. Yes. But uh, we, we definitely don't want to make it a situation where uh, our seniors will not be able to afford, mm -hmm. especially those who need the center yes, to go there. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Those in favor, aye. 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 No opposed? It's unanimous. Um, the last <coughs> item I have is Ordinance 2019-24, which is an ordinance to amend the Code of Clayton County, Georgia, as amended specifically Code of Clayton County, Georgia, Chapter 70, Personnel, Article 2, Code of Ethics, to modify the process for appointment of members to the Board of Ethics, to repeal conflicting laws, ordinances, and resolutions, to provide severability, to provide an effective date, and for other purposes. So a motion. So moved, Mr. Chair. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Any questions? Hearing Maybe, none. Can we, nope. can we just ask Chuck to explain this? Because I know there was a citizen some months ago who kind of <coughs> came up with this. So just would have it on the record as to why we're doing this. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so um, as the board may be aware, there was a challenge made to ethics boards across the state of Georgia as to the method of appointment. Um, and the short version is that many ethics boards had persons who were appointed by non-government 
eight uh, people. So essentially what this ethics uh, amendment does is allow input from those same entities, but ultimately the people who would be appointed on to the ethics board would be this board. Uh, this tracks the schedule for the timing of those same persons who were appointed. So those who roll off in 2020, those who roll off in 22, they would be on the board for that amount of time. It also uh, specifies the qualifications of a person who's appointed to the board, namely that they must be a resident of Clayton County. It also uh, provides one small clarification on a, a typographical error that we caught on the complaint process as, as it relates to where uh, the citation for imposition of sanctions where it cited a code section that didn't exist. So that that's essentially what this resolution does. I mean, this ordinance change does. Okay, thank you. All right, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, it's unanimous. Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Chair, I would like a, an executive session on litigation and personnel. All right, I think uh, budget amendment. Good evening, Mr. Chair, Madam Vice Chair, Commissioners. We have one item for your consideration this evening, Budget Amendment 2-24 of the Capital Projects Fund. It's to appropriate fund balance in the amount of one million five hundred thousand dollars to construct additional square footage to the intergenerational center to house the boys and girls club of america all right is there a motion so moved mr chair is there a second second any questions yes commissioner please explain this to me i can explain it commissioner uh, i asked for it to be on there the reason that we're doing this is simply because it's not just for boys and girls club um for whatever reason, it was decided that this would be one facility, uh, the intergenerational facility would have both seniors and kids in one facility. So whether we incorporate, number one, Boys and Girls Club or not, when looking at the design of the facility, in my personal opinion, as well as from uh, the opinion, professional opinion of others, we didn't have adequate um, entrance and exit and space for the security of our children. That was my thought process. Number two, there's an opportunity for us to be able to finally partner with the Boys and Cl Girls Club of America to help defray some of the operating costs of the youth part of this uh, facility. And so when we're looking at what we're spending in personnel over the course of several years, then it makes sense for us to be able to really dive in deep to see if we can make this happen. Um, in the audience tonight, and we didn't recognize her, we have Councilwoman from Noonan, Georgia, and they have two facilities that run under um, this type of arrangement. This area serves not just District 3 residents, but District 1, as well as District 2, is it 2? Four. Four. District 1 and District 4 residents. And this area needs help. And so this is an opportunity for the county to really have a P3 interest where we can now begin to use philanthropy efforts to be able to service the community as well as um, make sure that our students have what they need. Um, <clears throat> as I stated, um, this has been done in other areas and this is why I'm asking for the build out. It's stated for Boys and Girls Club, but at the same token, this needs to be done regardless. Yeah, and just to add to that, we've been talking about doing a Boys and Girls Club for many years, and this is the first time we've actually come this close to making it happen, and I truly believe that it will happen. And as uh, Commissioner Warner has stated, the, that area will definitely greatly benefit from having an additional program with the Boys and Girls Club in that area. Okay. I don't have a problem with Boys and Girls Club, Y, M, W, C, A, and all that, but I do have a problem specifying that that is for that particular group. And I don't know if you all remember, but some years back, our legislators, um, several of them, do you know which Boys and Girls Club it is? Because we had two or three different groups trying to start 
a mm -hmm. boys and girls club. <clears throat> and there was a lot of controversy about that. There's like a main boys and girls club, there's another boys and girls club or whatever. Have we determined which boys and girls club this will be? And specifically, I can tell you that would be boys and girls club of, and Councilwoman, please come and correct me. I'm sorry. A Metro Atlanta, which ties us into the region. I just didn't want to call it wrong. And I do, and Commissioner, I understand where you're coming from because I, I wouldn't have put it on the agenda in that capacity, to be quite honest with you. But I will tell you that regardless of what people have done in the past, this is a different situation. We own the building. This is our building. This is not going to, that's why I don't like the way it's listed. It's not going to the Boys and Girls Club. It's going to build out our facility to make sure that we have adequate space for our students. Now, at the end of the day, Commission, Commissioner, if it comes down to it that we do not utilize Boys and Girls Club, that's fine. But we want to make sure that we have adequate entrance and exits for our students versus our adults, especially in today's time, regardless. And that was my, my conversation with the chair as well as Mr. COO. Um, and oh, I'm sorry. Councilwoman, if you could please uh, come up, he's asking me about you. Can you please Let me come just up say this and introduce she's yourself? Coming or whatever. Yes, ma'am. I would feel more comfortable if we just build the wing or build whatever it is, whether it's for whatever group, but not name it Boys and Girls Club. If Boys and Girls Club want to use the facility, if that's the, that's the idea, out, the use that's what I'm saying. I didn't put this on there that girls. way. What That's what's saying. on here. Yeah, but I didn't do that. I yeah, didn't put it on there in that the manner. You are correct. That Can we correct that before we vote? Yes. Huh? You can amend. Well, I would like to see it done before we vote and all because, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to specify one motion particular motion group for, for a million dollars. A million I understand. Dollars. And I understand. I, I'm, I'm, and I amend the motion. So that it could basically be that we add the 1.5 million to complete the build out of the intergenerational facility be, to be able to service the community. Is there a second? Second. Any other questions on that? I do. I just want to know, um, as far as the programming, so you're saying all the programming and so forth, that's going to be under the auspices of the Boys and Girls Club in that particular area. All when you say good. all the programming, let me say this. You have senior programming and you have programming for youth. So again, we have not gotten to the agreement with the Boys and Girls Club. That's why again, I don't, I don't, I, my, my conversation with <clears throat> Mr. COO and everyone else after we looked at it was that we complete the build out with additional space again so that we have adequate space whether it's YMW, YWCA, YMCA, I do as the commissioner that this sits in the district of, of this project that's been delayed and delayed, I would like to see a Boys and Girls Club come in and to facilitate the program and specifically for the youth. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because it's not a parks and rec deal. This has a black box theater in it. We're gonna service the community as a whole. And it's an opportunity for us to finally get something in this community that this community has been asking for. And finally, let me say, District 3 would be the only district that does not have a senior facility. So we want to make sure our seniors have their adequate space and our students and kids have their adequate space. So I do agree with Commissioner Hambrick. I wouldn't have put it on in that fashion. But, we, but I think part of it was just so that we are transparent and knowing what the wishes of myself as the commissioner who's come in on the tail end of this project. And Councilwoman, can you introduce yourself for us, please, of Noonan? It was Cynthia Jenkins. <laughs> My name is Cynthia Jenkins. I'm the mayor pro tem of the city of Noonan, but I also serve as CEO of the Southern Crescent Habitat for Humanity here in Clayton County. It's nice to meet you. Thank you for having me. And well, for, thank you for being here. <clears throat> and Mr. Chair, I would just add real quick for, the, for you all to understand, Cobb County has a model that is phenomenal. Noonan has a model that's phenomenal. It's just time for us to go ahead and move forward and make it happen. We can't hold on to the past. I can't change the past. But what I can do is do my best to affect the present to make a better future for us. I don't mind the, uh, you know, increasing and because I, I think each building or each facility we have each year, it should be better. Right. But again, to specify 
what this will be used for. Why can't it just be a part of recreation, parts of recreation? Because. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm gonna let you have that. No, I was just gonna say. Let's just uh, agree on this and move uh, forward. And we and we do. We understand where you're coming from. Right. We agree with it. There's just a wing and a building that will be used if uh, an agreement can be made to house to or to allow the Boys and Girls Club to utilize for our youth program. Well, that's what I have a program. problem with because I'm telling you, it's it, why are we naming? We're, Nobody named it. You talking about a, pro a program that's going to be used inside specifically the for? Yes. I've already okay. amended my motion. Well, I, I just so, okay. so this is so, just for the building. That's for the building. There is no services involved for the building. In for the building. Right whoever wants whoever to utilizes use it, it utilizes it. Uh, I guess you want children or uh, uh, can youth. we just hold on? Let her finish. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Or youth or whatever. It doesn't have to be because I I, I truly do. Um, and that's what her amended motion uh, notated. Okay, I didn't hear that. Okay. Well. Anything else? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed. <clears throat> it's unanimous. Next. Mr. Chairman, next we have our zoning public hearings. The applicant Eric Robinson is requesting to rezone from Article 3, Section 3-24, Urban Village District, to Article 7, Plan Unit Development, to develop 63 residential dwellings within the Spivey Club subdivision located near Lake Spivey, Georgia. The proposed development will be the second phase of this sub subdivision. Planning and zoning staff recommends denial, and the zoning advisory group recommends approval with conditions. This is in Commissioner Davis's area, District 4. All right, is the applicant Mr. Robinson here? Uh, Mr. Reed, do we have already have a zoning hearing, or did we pull it before we had the public hearing on this? I'm sorry, say that again. Did we pull this the last time before we had the public hearing, or did we have the public hearing on this already? We did not have a public hearing because the applicant was not present at the last meeting. It was tabled to okay. this meeting. Well, that was at his request, I believe. Correct. So, was he notified to be here today that this will be on? He should have been aware. I'm sorry, I haven't had any recent conversation with him uh, since the last tabling, but he was aware that it was tabled to this meeting. How would you like to proceed, uh, Commissioner Davis? I just request we table it again. Just, yeah, table it to I, a specific date so that way. To a, you say to a, sp a specific next, date? Do to you the, want the, next, the next zoning hearing? Let's have it on the next zoning hearing. Okay. Which date is that? March, March, 19th. March 19th. March 19th. All right, so his motion, <laughs> Commissioner Davis' motion is to table this until March 19th. Is there a second? Second. Any questions? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, it's unanimous. The next item <clears throat> is a map 19-01-01. The Clayton County Board of Commissioners initiates a map amendment to the official zoning map to rezone from Article 3, Section 3.31, Heavy Industrial District, to Article 3, Section 3.11, Multiple Family Residential District, for the parcel number 12082A, B004. The subject property is approximately 13.4 acres, currently developed as multifamily residential known as Indian Lake Apartments. The zoning advisory group recommends approval. This is in District 4, Commissioner Davis's area. Yes, is there anything to add, Ms. Spann, on this? I'll, I'll do a briefing on this. This is a, a map correction. We have an existing apartment development referred to as Indian Lakes. During the 2017 rezoning, we, we assume the error occurred where half of the property was zoned industrial. You can see the split colors on the mapping area the purple indicating an industrial zoning and the and the gold color representing multifamily. This initiated request is to ch change all to multifamily so it will be reflected on the map as gold. There, there is industrial zoning surrounding the property, but however, the multifamily will be consistent with how the property is developed. All right, any questions on this? Uh, da, da, da. Anybody here to speak for or against this? I would like to ask a question. Come to the podium, Mr. Garber.
Mickey Garber, Unincorporated Rex, Georgia. Uh, my question is, in the end, what do you want this area to be, industrial or multifamily? What is the end result here? Well, I'm assuming you're on you're directing that to Commissioner Davis. Uh, the end result. Uh, to anybody that can. The end answer. result in this zoning area is multifamily. As multi as apartments, sir. Or yeah, right now, those are what's on that lot right now are apartments. As right. apartments. Yes. <coughs> okay. Let me say this to you uh, in regard to apartments. Apartments, as I understand it. Pay the ta pay taxes as a whole apartment complex. The individuals living in the apartments don't pay any property tax. Is that correct? The owner of the apartment the owner complex of the apartment pays taxes. Okay, correct. Now that we've got that squared away in my mind, my next statement is that. The people who live in these apartments have families and have children that go to, that go to school. <clears throat> in no way do I see that apartment, apartments would pay enough tax to support the children in school. We already have that problem with over the population and not being able to support the schools mm -hmm. and pay the proper amount of money to educate the children. They, the school system asked me to raise the millage rate, which I agreed to. But to add to our problem that we already have <clears throat> and let a part, more apartments come in here to put our educational system deeper in debt or not having the budget to support uh, or to teach the children. I would recommend that you deny any apartment requests. Well, Thank uh, right now, this ahead. Right now, this is just a zoning issue. Okay. There is no plan to build on this. The first step, uh, uh, Commissioner, in getting a subject done is you gotta go through zoning. If you pass it here, then that's a foothold to get apartments put in. Is I agree. The, uh, am I making myself I know, clear? I 100% agree with you. Okay, so so let's let's try to use good judgment here, and uh, on both my side and understanding, and your side in doing the deed. Uh, that's all I got to say. Quick. Are we saying that all the purple is going to change into? No, I'll no. make a clarification. Only the boundary on the on the map that's highlighted in uh, in the blue is the area that's that's being uh, addressed tonight. The the uh, owner, if, if any time the owner would seek financing to to bring to upgrade the development, a lot of times the, the inconsistency in zoning would have an impact on their financing. So having the property under the correct zoning in accordance to the use makes it more palatable for receiving financing for upgrades. Okay, so this is, this the is first step to, to, to getting apartments put in here is this zoning, right? The, so the, the, speak up. the, the apartments are already existing. This is an, an attempt to, to clarify a mapping error. The uh, complex is a, it's, it's been there for some time. It's the Indian Lakes development. They already right. exist. Yeah, they already so she's saying so, that they're okay. trying to so, in, to make it trying to upgrade excuse the me, apartments. Uh, Commissioner Warner, I didn't hear you. I just th want to make sure we're all on the same page. I'm sorry, I'm like the mom, but um, they, they they already exist. And so one of the things you don't want to do is go in and zone a piece of a property different from the rest of the property, especially when it already exists, because if you got somebody that's trying to go in and rehab something, you want them to make it better. So she's just, we're just trying to correct an error yeah. okay. with this. That's it. Okay. You are correct. You are correct in that they could have apartments on this, but this is not what this is not what this vote is about. 
It's about mm -hmm. changing the zoning in order for that property to even upgrade. Mm -hmm. Now we have to ask ourselves, do we want high industrial or do we want that property continue to get run down? Or do we want it fixed up? That's a good point. Now if we don't, if we keep it <laughs> high industrial, the, the chance of them fixing those complexes up is slim. Yes, yes, that is correct. <clears throat> but sir, heavy industrial, if you let it go heavy industrial, they tear down the apartments okay. and then you don't have, mm -hmm. when they become in disrepair. Mm -hmm. Heavy industrial is gonna pay you more tax dollars than an apartment complex. And the more tax dollars for what children are here uh, get more money put to their education. You, am I making myself yes. clear? Yes. Okay, okay. You're going to get this same argument mm -hmm. every time a zoning comes up for apartments. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else come forward? Take the mic, please. Good evening, Chairman, Commissioners. Darlene Johnson, Rex, Georgia. I'm just trying to understand. So we're talking about rezoning. Uh, are you saying that that blue section, that all of the purple is already industry, industrial? That's, that's correct. It is already industrial. Mm -hmm. So they're actually surrounded by multi-use land okay so i'm just trying to get clear what we're talking about because the only issue i really would have with that is the uh the multi-use and the industrial being those small communities being inundated and surrounded by industry you can note from the area map there how the how the property is developed you can see they are already surrounded by massive uh, p properties that are pa appear to be <laughs> non-residential in nature, probably industrial in nature. So the develop the area is primarily already developed in that manner. So the industrial zoning pretty much reflects what's already existing in the era in the area. Okay, I understand. But and you know I have an issue with that throughout the county. We have a lot of that, and it creates a lot of uh, 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 environmental issues for me. Uh, when you're you're in a community that's just surrounded by industry, um, but that's a whole nother conversation. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else want to speak for or against it? Mr. Farmer? I have a question. Uh, when you have an apartment complex and they said the person that owns it pays the taxes. Mm -hmm. Do he pay the same taxes as if you would put in houses in that area? No. Or less? Do we pay more or less or equal or the same? Depends. I think it's, I think it's based on the assessed value of the property. Assessed value of the property and the units that's included in there? That's a tax commissioner question. It's the same tax, same same tax, tax base. Same so then if he put houses there or apartments there, the money is still the same. same? Yes, sir. No. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. huh? square okay. Anybody else want to speak for or against? <laughs> All right, hearing or seeing none, <laughs> Commissioner Davis. Recommend approval on this matter. Is there a second? So moved. Any other questions? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Next. The next item is map 19-0102. Clayton County Board of Commissioners initiates a map amendment to the Old Dixie Overlay District boundaries of the official zoning map by amending the boundary to exclude 6288 Old Dixie Highway. The subject parcel is also identified as 13115C, C002, and currently zoned MC Medical Center District. The Old Dixie Terrell Boulevard Overlay District boundaries shall be amended to reflect this revision. The zoning advisory group recommends approval with one condition. This is in Commissioner Davis's district four. Uh, no, uh, Ms. Spann, you got anything yes. to add? And please uh, <coughs> uh, 
restate the condition. Yes, um, the brief, when the Zoning Advisory Committee re reviewed this, their recommendation was for approval, but, but it, was, it, it was intended for them, their recommendation was for them to include landscaping on, in, on the exterior, the same as the requirements for all other properties that were inside the overlay, considering this property still will be adjoined by the overlay. <coughs> they wanted the landscaping to have some consistency. So their recommendation was approval for it to be removed from the overlay, but they would maintain the landscaping standards. Okay, is there anybody here who wants to speak for or against this recommendation? Anybody want to speak for or against? Commissioner Davis. We approve with the conditions. Is there a second? Second. Any questions? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. The next item is FLUP 1901-0002. The Clayton County Board of Commissioners initiates a map amendment to the future land use map from MX1, which is mixed use industrial to LDR, low density residential for four parcels of land located at 4125, <coughs> 4179, 4181, and zero on Williamson Road. The Zoning Advisory Group recommends approval. This is in District 1, Commissioner Gregory's District. Ms. Spam. The uh, Zoning Advisory Group recommendation for this was for, for approval. The, uh, this is a companion request. Uh, there's a, we didn't sound them together, but the, this request is for the future land use map adjustment to change the future land use designation from MI, MXI, which is mixed use industrial, to low density residential because the companion case changes some industrial zoning back to residential. So this LDR for, for single family development would be consistent on the comp plan map, uh, consistent with the second case that's coming up next that will recommend residential zoning RES 180. All right, anybody here to speak for or against this? Please come forward. Good evening, Donna Mullins, Ellenwood, Georgia, unincorporated. I just want to say thank you um, for correcting this. It's been um, heavy industrial since 2008, and um, God bless y'all on December the 19th, 2018, the day that my aunt passed away, y'all changed her house. And I'm real happy to see that my road is about to be residential again, and I want to thank you. Mm. Anybody else want to speak for or against? Commissioner Gregory. Mr. Chair, I offer a motion to approve the change in of the map as read by our zoning administrator. Is there a second? Second. Any questions? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. The last item is the map 1901-03. The Clayton County Board of Commissioners initiates a map amendment to four parcels of land located at 4125, 4179, 4181, and zero on Williamson Road from heavy industrial district to residential district. The same parcels are also identified as 12245D, A003, 12245D, A007, 12245D, A009, and 12245D, A010. The Zoning Advisory Group recommends approval. This is also in District 1, Commissioner Gregory's district. Ms. Spam. Again, this is the companion case to the future land use map change that we just addressed. So uh, the zoning on this property is changing the zoning from HI Heavy Industrial to RS 180. So the zoning will now be consistent, based on board action, the zoning will now be consistent with the comp plan and the RS 180 as shown in yellow on the, on the uh, map shows that the, uh, those industrial pockets will now be closed off and that whole area, the whole banded area would be for residential development under RS 180. Anybody speak for or against this request? <laughs> All right, again, uh, Commissioner Gregor. Uh, again, Mr. Chair, I um, recommend that we approve this petition. Is there a second? Second. Any questions? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. 
Chairman, that ends the agenda. Okay, I believe we have a request to go into executive session for litigation and personnel. And before I take a motion on that, I'd like to recognize Council Member Ansel Davis. Appreciate you being here from Riverdale. Uh, Simmons was here too. Yeah, he left on. Is there a motion to go to executive session? So moved. Oh, I'm sorry. Stamps Jones. Councilwoman Stamps Jones is here hey. as well. Good to see you. I was looking at you and I was like, Pam, Ju uh, Judge Ferguson. Is she here? Like, Judge Ferguson stayed. is here as well. She's, she's always here, though. We appreciate yes, that, thank Judge. you. Uh, motion go to executive session. So moved. I'll second. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed. Is she next? All right, motion to reconvene. So moved. Is there a second? <clears throat> I'll second. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Mr. Reed. Uh, Mr. Chair and uh, Vice Chair and Commissioners, I have one a property damage settlement with, between Clayton County and Travelers Property Casualty Insurance Company, ISO Calvin L. Jackson, in the amount of $12,851.90 uh, relating to an accident that occurred on or about the fourth day of September 2018 at or near Highway 314 at Wesley Drive. Um, and we do have a property damage release that's been signed by the um, injured person what or the, the owner of the of property. Name? What was the name of that in? It's uh, Calvin L. Jackson. Okay. All right, is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any questions? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. <laughs> On behalf of the Sheriff Department, Human Resources is requesting a step increase for the Legal Advisor Sheriff classification. We're requesting to increase the steps to, uh, well, the grade for the position is grade 31, step increase uh, step 17, salary $84,342 for a total comp of $110,443. All right, is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any questions? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay. Three, two, it passes. I should have asked my question then. Too late. Too late. Too late. I can make a statement. You can make it. Well, I'll, I'll recognize. The only statement. reason I'm making a statement for my vote for no is because what we don't want to do is create a situation where you're bringing somebody in and they're increasing in pay um, as they begin to get their tenure. So if we keep doing this for everybody, where you bring them in because somebody left out of the salary, then what we're doing is elevating that salary, and I believe that we're doing it um, not necessarily in the best benefit of our community. That's all. Yeah, and I believe we could have found uh, another revenue stream to accomplish the same thing, but it's over and done with, so we'll move on. Done. Thank you. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Okay. Uh, who second? I'll, I'll second. All right. Commissioner Gregory second. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed. It's unanimous. <laughs>